Roby Excavating Weekly Training April 27, 2020 Journey Management COVID-19 Update Total cases as of Saturday, April 25, 2020 at 1 p.m. Confirmed cases in West Virginia is 1,010. United States has 930,000 confirmed cases, while globally there's 2.8 million. Total deaths in West Virginia is 32. United States total deaths, 52,546. And globally, there's 100,099 total deaths. Total recovered in West Virginia is 439. Total recovered in the United States is 101,000. And globally, there's over 103,000 people that have recovered. Confirmed cases by county. Harrison County has 30. Monongalia County has 89. Marion County has 44. Wood County has 35. Marshall County remains at 8. And Wetzel County remains at 8. COVID-19 update continued. Still in effect for Harrison, Monongalia, Marion, Wood, and Kanawha counties is Governor Jim Justice order, limiting groups to a maximum of five people, directing all businesses to require employees to work from home to the maximum extent possible, directing all local health departments to establish maximum occupancy of and proper social distancing within essential businesses and to take action to enforce these health regulations and directing West Virginia National Guard to provide logistical support and services and directing the West Virginia State Police to assist with enforcement of local county orders. Continuing with the COVID-19 update, remember only supervisors, truck drivers, and those working in the shop area are permitted in the shop. Limit the number of supervisors in the office area at one time. Keep groups of crews working together less than five people in one area. Practice social distancing of six feet apart to the best of your ability. Clean and disinfect your PPE daily. Disinfect your work vehicles daily. And if you need additional disinfectant spray or hand sanitizer, let EHS personnel know. This week, we have an environmental incident alert from Bob Tawney with Dominion Energy. The date of the incident was April 21st, 2020. Location of the incident was the Way 250 Project in Ohio. The type of incident was a reportable inadvertent return, or IR. Description of the incident is during the relocation of approximately 300 feet of 8-inch pipeline to accommodate an Ohio DOT bridge replacement, a reportable IR occurred. The IR initially manifested in an upland area approximately 6 feet upslope of a regulated stream during the pilot hole phase of the drilling operation. Crews installed composite filter sock downslope of the IR. However, due to the uneven terrain and the dense vegetation in the area, proper containment was not achieved. These factors, along with the steep slope in which the IR occurred, created a situation that allowed the drilling fluid to undercut the installed erosion control devices, or ECDs, and then release approximately one gallon of drilling fluid into the stream. The crews modified the installed best practice management or best management practices or BMPs, contained the material and utilized a vacuum truck to remediate the release. 
Notification to the Ohio EAP was then made. Other details of the alert is that it is imperative that ECDs and BMPs be properly installed to help prevent reportable environmental events. Our first safety observation this week comes from Dalton Salfus on February 24th at 7.55 a.m. The location was at Camden Avenue in Parkersburg, and the type of observation is a near miss. An AWP worker was putting up the tailgate of his truck when the tailgate fell off of the truck, almost striking the worker. What was done about the incident was that they talked to the crew in the safety meeting about the incident, describing what happened. Our second observation this week comes from Garrett Swagger. On March 16th at 8.33 a.m., the location was at Arbutus. The type of observation was trench safety. And the description was that the crew was digging a trench for workers to enter and work on pipe installation. What was done, the operator did a good job in moving the spoil pile back from the edge of the trench for worker safety. Hi, I'm Matt from Enterprise Recruitment. This is a quick health and safety toolbox talk about lifting and carrying safety. Lifting, carrying, pushing, pulling, twisting and reaching is all hard on your body. There are a few key things to remember to reduce your chance of injury. Warm up before you start heavy work. Do a few quick stretches. Plan your job wherever possible. Avoid lifting heavy items above your shoulders. Always bend your knees to protect your back. Make sure you have a clear path when moving around. Keep the load close to your body and always ask for help where needed. For more tips on health and safety, visit our website. Thanks for watching. This week's topic is on journey management. A journey management plan has been established for those employees who are required to road travel in the performance of company business. A copy of the journey management plan will be readily available at the workplace. The purpose of the journey management plan is to ensure that travel in the performance of company business is actually required that the mode of travel is appropriate and that if travel is to take place it is well planned and it accomplishes its goals in a safe and efficient manner the journey management plan will be reviewed with the road travelers before the travel commences and they will keep a copy with them on the road Establishing the need for travel. Road journeys should only be taken when necessary and whenever possible. Rather than traveling for company business, other more time efficient and cost effective methods of performing company business should be considered. These would include, but not limited to, a simple telephone contact, establishing a group call, computer contact, or establishing a group computer link. Selection of mode of travel. Consideration should be given to safer and more time efficient means of travel as opposed to road travel. Airplanes, buses, and trains should be considered taking into consideration cost, convenience, destination, location, weather hazards, number of employees traveling, parking, and destination transportation, etc. Road journey itinerary. 
To maximize the value of road journeys for company business, effort should be given to accomplishing multiple tasks on any one trip. A written itinerary should be prepared and taken on the trip. Safety during road journeys. If, in fact, a road journey is necessary, the below safety procedures should be adhered to. One, drivers should always complete a pre-trip inspection of their vehicle before any road journey. Road travelers should carry a copy of the road journey management plan. Two, whether using a company vehicle or privately owned vehicle, the vehicle registration and insurance forms must be with the vehicle. Three, whenever practical, practicable, road travel should be completed during daylight hours. If driving at night, reduce your speed and be aware of the potential for wildlife to be on the road, especially when driving at dusk or at dawn. Four, before leaving on a trip, ensure that the weather conditions are safe for driving. Ensure the vehicle is adequate for the weather conditions, i.e. tire tread is sufficient, windshield washer fluid is full, and wipers are in good condition. Ensure the vehicle is equipped with emergency supplies. The vehicle should be equipped with a roadside emergency kit that will assist should trouble develop. These kits include water, booster cables, first aid supplies, warning triangles, flashlights. If there is a potential for snow and ice, carry sandbags and a shovel. Note, in particularly harsh conditions, consideration should be given to canceling or rescheduling the trip. Five, obtain driving directions before traveling to unfamiliar destinations. Printed directions should be readily available. Do not plan to read directions from a smartphone while driving. A GPS device may be used, but printed directions should be kept as a backup. Six, in addition to a cell phone, which is especially valuable, when traveling in rural areas, consider using a CB radio and even subscribing to an in-vehicle communication remote diagnostic service, such as OnStar, if your vehicle is equipped. Seven, employees should notify their supervisor or another individual who is not traveling with them of their travel plans. This notification should include where they are going when they should be getting there, and when they plan to return. Eight, when driving long distances, sufficient breaks should be taken to prevent fatigue. If driving alone and having trouble staying awake, pull off the road and get out of the vehicle for fresh air or take a power nap. If driving late at night, consider getting a hotel room and starting fresh the next day. If two licensed drivers are in the vehicle, take turns driving. Get plenty of rest before beginning your journey. Supervisors and crew leaders. Remember, have all your crew members watch the training video, complete your JSA and toolbox talk for the day. Have your crew members sign the JSA and take a photo of a signed JSA and send it to Mike Limley's cell phone. Have a great work week and be safe. Next week is our large safety meeting on May 4th. I will send out a text to all supervisors letting you know what time to expect EHS at your job site or other location that the meeting will be held.